Season 5, Episode 11, Autumn Glory, and a miracle has finally happened. I finally matched Bob in the time it takes to make the sky and the clouds. <laughs> so, e within a few seconds here and there. But I had the chance to be able to use pure color right out of the can, so I was able to use this nice light blue and the paint color. And this brush is a new brush, and it's working great so far. It is a Zebra Nylon 1-inch round brush. It's got a teeny tiny tip on the end of it, so it's not like blunt. It's not squared off. It's got kind of a conical shape at the end. So making these clouds with this brush was really helpful. I think this might be my new brush. And as you'll see I, later, I use it also for some of the foliage too. So now I'm just obviously doing the same, making volumes of, you know, the lighter color and the darker color on the bottom of the clouds and trying to make those two sections of clouds look like they're separated by span of space. So the back clouds are just a little further away. So I'll come back and keep highlighting and highlighting until I get that super contrast that I like to see. I just added a little bit of clear there just to kind of blend it in a little bit more, just kind of soften it up a little bit. Now I'm ready to do the mountain range and that's the purple with just a hair of that Kona brown added to it. Yeah, I really like that brush. It did the one thing about it is it holds a lot of everything. So there is a lot of bristles in that brush and they're very dense. So it holds a lot of paint, which is cool, but it also holds a lot of lacquer thinner, which is a mess. So I might have to figure out a better way to, uh, you know, disperse the lacquer thinner out of that brush, maybe spinning it or something else because banging it on the side of the can is making a big mess. I just lightened this, I actually toned this white with a little bit of the pink color like he did in his painting just to kind of give it a softer, a little bit further away look. Although I feel like it kind of has a real high contrast. It doesn't look like a super far away mountain to me. And then of course, just uh, some of the lighter blue, same as the sky blue for the shadows. And then I'm gonna come back with some of that light pink and create a mist for the mountain range to kind of soften up. That really helps if you can use the same color as the, you know, the surrounding sky to create your mist. It really makes a big difference because then you can just use straight out of the can. You don't have to worry so much about trying to blend it. Where I think I tried to do that here tried to blend it a little bit, but found that that wasn't working. So I just went ahead and sprayed it again and then just left it that spray. I kind of feel like that was where I should stop. And now I'm just going to go ahead and use that same zebra one inch brush to block out all the, the shadows of the trees and just kind of block out the whole foreground. And again, this is purple with a, actually a, quite a bit more of the Kona brown added to it. So there's it's kind of a, more of a brownish, purplish hue. And this is kind of, from here on out, is, other than water reflection, it's just a foliage marathon, just adding all the layers of colors and, you know, the fall colors, which is the point of this whole painting. So this time I was had a different kind of... Um, mm, thought process as far as the reflection. What I want to do is go ahead and lay down this entire background tree line and bush line, get all my colors down. And then when I was ready to do the water line or the water reflection, I wanted to spray some more of the pink and light blue and then add the, you know, late and then dollop some of the colors of the foliage that was right above it to see if I can get a more of a reflection using the two inch brush and the clear. I think with a little bit more practice and a little bit more experimenting, 
I think it's the way to go. And I, I did, uh, I am going to cheat a little bit using, uh, using some cardstock to kind of help me keep the overspray from going beyond the bushes. Well, I don't really feel like that's cheating in this case because, you know, it's, it is spray painting. And there's times you're just going to need a shield. The red is not like right out of a can. I'm, I really messed with this red a lot because I didn't want it to be this like exploding, like, you know, bright red. I wanted it to still be this kind of dull, like autumn-y kind of a color. So I, I took a while to mix this color. I added orange. I added the coral. I added a, a little bit of the Kona brown. So there's quite a bit of going on inside of this. It's not just the red right out of the can. And same with the orange. I did this, did add some of the coral and just a little bit of some, some of the, uh, you know, medium tan beige colors. So I didn't want this all to just be like, look like a, I don't know, like candy land. I wanted it to look a little bit more realistic foliage, you know, fall foliage and with a slight background look to it. And so I, that's why I did a lot of dolloping on the side before I went ahead and put it on the painting. So I wanted to make sure that before I add any paint to the surface that I've got it to where I want it to be. And now it's time for the water line. Just a little bit of pink, a little bit of that same blue. So it's, it's just replicating the sky. Now I'm just going to replicate the colors right above in the plants. And I'm kind of thinking, hmm, I'm hoping I'll be able to pull this off. And I'm, I'm kind of a little bit hoping that the clear will do that. Now I'm adding the clear and I'm just going to pull it down straight down with that soft two inch brush. And then I'm going to give it a shot of going horizontal. And I thought, ah, oh, this is, uh, it's looking okay, but it's, you know, it's kind of like, it's all right, but it's not like has that foliage mirrored look. It just has that more blurred look. So um, I'll keep working on that a little bit more and see if I can replicate it. I think in previous paintings or one previous painting, I was able to replicate it with a little bit more foliage texture in the water. But I just felt like moving on. Okay, some of the terrain is just the same Kona brown with some highlighting of the beige color. I just kind of know I'm going to lay it down, then come back and kind of texture it some more. So just lay down the first color, then lay down the highlight color, and then come back and do some more texturing. Let's try the fan brush for some of the different kind of effects, some grassy effects. I think I may have done a little bit too much of this grassy effect. I think what I was trying to do was create a a, a line or like a kind of like a separation from the trees and the terrain. And I don't I really don't think that red helped. I think I was just trying to pull in some more of fall colors. But Probably if I stayed more with kind of grassy colors like beiges and oranges and browns and things like that, I, th I think it would have been a little bit more, I guess I'd say realistic looking as far as a, as far as a uh, terrain line with grass on it. I started to use the fan brush to just to highlight some of the things, just add a little bit of white kind of like sparkle, like Bob talks about. Now it's time for the water line. This is just diluted straight white with uh, diluted with lacquer thinner just to keep it a little bit distant. That really makes a big difference. Those that white in the water line it creates a really neat looking reflection. Now back to blocking out the rest of the foreground with the Kona brown, mostly Kona brown and with some purple in it. This will be covering a lot of area. You 
yeah, I really like that brush. I think that that was a that was a good choice. As you can see, it's starting to really get dirty, though. <laughs> it really, really drew up a lot of paint within within itself, and it really took a lot of lacquer thinner to clean it out at the end, because it's a, like I said, real fine bristles, and a lot of density. But that density is what helps create those effects, especially the cloud effect. I really like how it works for the cloud effect, and it's doing a good job with the bushes too, and and trees creates kind of a different look for the texture of the trees and the bushes more so than the fan brush i think the fan brush is great for certain kind types of bushes and trees especially the more like the evergreens and things like that but if you want a more bushy tree like that's roundy or you know roundish and that kind of has that kind of a shape this is the ticket this is really works good. That far right tree, you'll see soon that that effect um, was what happened with that brush. More more of a round shape to the tree. And now I'm just doing the foreground trail and terrain. Coming back with some of the brightest green that I have. It's almost like a yellow green to brighten up that, that one tree and just a few other little places. Just to add a little pop and snap. See, I started to use a fan brush and I switched back over to the one inch round nylon brush. So I just felt like that created a more softer texture in the foreground. Kind of a more, I don't know what you call it, just kind of a, just, just a little more bushy um, texture versus like a fern. Fan brush is great for like ferns. It really creates a, awesome fern like type plant but for a more bushy effect with fine tiny leaves this one inch is really really effective so i'm going to move over to the that, uh, bushy tree over there and just highlight it a few more highlights on there of red lights a brighter red so now i'm just using all of the same colors but just a brighter version of those to create a little bit more highlight. Foreground, I wanted to keep darker than the background because it, 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 that was the whole point of this is to kind of make that all kind of, even though foreground, even though it's a foreground, it needs to be uh, darker than the background just because that brilliant burst of light is supposed to be happening in the back. And a lot of this is just camouflaging some of the places that I'd want to cover, you know, some of the terrain that that just needed to be covered and some of the little drips and flaws that might be happening. Which is what's pretty cool about this. You can you can <laughs> you can cover things over that you don't like with bushes. All right, now it's time for the birch tree. At least that's what I think it is. And it's just straight out of the can Kona brown and then I'm using the liner brush and then I'm going to come back with uh, like a it's like an ivory color it is ivory and go ahead and make the bark with that I'm just trying to I don't know why it didn't quite was laid down flat I think the surface of the cardstock was a little bit irregular kind of rippled so I had a I was kind of it was kind of a little challenging to do this bark, but I think it came out okay. And then I did have to uh, really kind of mess with the color as far as the leaves for this. And I finally got a lighter color that would, wouldn't just blend in with the background, but also have contrast in the sky. And that wraps it up for this painting. Here's mine. Here's Bob's. And thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. Take care. <laughs>